Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I'm going live. I see three people here. So let me know if you can hear me and if everything is all right, if you can see me and hear me. Nice. <laughs> Loud and clear. <laughs> okay, more people are joining. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. I've never done that before. Let me just switch off my notifications here so that I won't get disturbed. <laughs> Hello. Okay, more people joining. I was not late today. I got some good habits from Sweden. <laughs> I'm on time. Okay. Take some water. Hello, guys. Let's have some fun. Let me know, let me know why are you joining the live stream? Is it because you want to know the truth? <laughs> Is it because you want to get to know me better? I'm great. I'm doing great. I've been traveling, enjoying life for like one and a half month. <laughs> How are you all doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I should wait longer for more people to join. And yeah, I'm nervous, but give me some time. Give me some time. Um, before I started with trading, I was an um, extrovert. I had no problem going in public, talking to anyone. I was a party animal, so I had no social problems. But <laughs> since I became a trader, I turned into an introvert. And uh, I realized that I enjoy much more to be in my own bubble. So it whenever i hang out with people for way too long i notice that my social battery is just dropping too fast do you think tft and the sft are coming back um let me ask you one question what kind of feeling do you feel before blowing an account? Have you ever reflected which feeling do you feel when you when before you blow an account? When you're in a deep drawdown and you're just scaling in like crazy? Let me see how much you're reflecting and journaling. What feeling do you feel before blowing an account? I believe if you're a trader, you, you've, all, you've all blown at least one account. Not really what it means. Like, which feeling do you feel? when you are about to blow an account. Mm. 
it seems like no one is doing their job. <laughs> no one is really reflecting. <laughs> Anger and sadness, depressed. Okay, no one really understands what I'm trying to say. Aren't you hopeful? Aren't you hopeful? And you're scaling in, hoping that price will turn the other way. Or it's only me who is hopeful, who was hopeful when I was about, about to blow accounts. <laughs> yeah, before, before you blow an account. Not not after you've blown the account. After you've blown the account, it's you're angry, you're sad, you're depressed. But before you blow the account, yeah, the feeling that we feel is hope. We are scaling in, despite the fact that we are in a crazy drawdown and hoping for the price to reverse. And whenever we kind of like leave things on hope, we get burned. And I know that many of you that are going to join the live stream or going to watch the live stream uh, later are here to hear if TFT and SFT are coming back because you're hopeful you don't want to move on <laughs> you don't want to accept the loss and move on so you want to calm this uh, feeling of no you want to be hopeful you want to hear something good that will make you feel better because the nature of human being is that we get much more hurt from the neg from the losses than what we cheer um profits or so something good that we have achieved so if if you think in yourself oh i hope that this will happen you better just move on and focus on something else I know that many of you got affected and don't get me wrong, like I'm not, um, it's not that I'm just telling, oh, what, you lost one account, move on. I understand that some of you have put the last maybe savings that you had into a challenge um, and you feel bad about it. I, I totally understand you because I have been affected the same way as many of you are uh, when MFF shut down. So I fully understand you. I completely understand understand you. But something that I, I can say is that dwelling on things that are out of our control, of your control, is just pointless. Um, it's not going to help you in any way. It's not going to benefit you in any way. So it's just better to move on and focus on the things that you can control, which is um, your actions and what you're going to be doing every single day to get better. You should be focusing on your skill set instead of focusing on finding out what really happened. <laughs> Even though I know that you're really curious to know what actually happened. So what you should be focusing on is your skill set, because this is something that no one can take. Everyone can shut down, but no one can take your skill set. So that's the thing that you should be focusing on. But yeah, do you want to know the truth? How much do you want to know? <laughs> So what happened to our funded account and challenge account? I was just talking about it. I was just talking about it. When Whenever you leave things on hope, you, the results are not good. <laughs> the result is usually a blown account. I know that you're hopeful that you're going to get your accounts back and I hope. I wish that you could get your accounts back, but I don't think that that will happen. Hello. Hello, 
Claudine. So, so it seems like you're here to hear the truth. I want you to be more interactive because it's not fun for me to stay here without you being interactive. Do you want to know everything? <laughs> Okay, silence. I can tell you everything, but I don't have money to fight them in a court. <laughs> I only have money to pay for a plastic surgery in Thailand, <laughs> which is good because I'm, I'm close here. So if you want to know everything, give me a second to book an appointment and then we can start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah transparency is very important but the thing is that nowadays yeah in thailand you can definitely get a cheap surgery so i have definitely money for that but i just like myself too much so i don't really want to change anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah transparency is important but the it's the fact is that everyone is just showing whatever they want you to see it's really hard to trust what you see nowadays on social media um About trading, oh, I have a lot to say about trading influencers. And I can actually share with you, like, I have a very weird relationship with social media. I know that I was the content creator for TFT last year, even though some people think that I'm still a content creator for TFT because I, I had recorded one year of content. So they were posting my content for quite a while so people still think that i'm the face of tft and dming me and telling me that i'm a scammer <laughs> and this is something that i want to mention like people are so judgmental there is no critical thinking nowadays like why would you spam me why would you send me dms and why are you going to tell me that i'm the scammer like what have i done <laughs> And when it comes to trading influencers, I can tell you that, yeah, I can see that now so many of them are loud. So many of them are recording videos telling you that they were aware of everything, that they were trying to protect the traders. One of the biggest influencers in the industry who everyone is kind of like following, they say, oh, we knew what was going on and we were trying to warned them we were trying to fight for the trader we didn't want to promote the services anymore but the truth is that they requested renewal of their contracts in february <laughs> so they are telling you that they cared about you and they, they that they were not promoting anything but how come like everyone was just promoting everything everything was fine in ops now when everything got shut down everyone was like oh i knew i i was aware of what was going on those people that you watch you spend your time you waste your time watching their videos to make them to to give them some money in the pockets um while they're lying to you So yeah, you should be wise how you're spending your time. It's better not to be on, of course, YouTube is a really great um, place to like learn lots of things, but it's a very toxic place uh, as well. And in general, like social media is like that. That's why I haven't been so active on social media. I have so many follow requests on my private accounts. Um, 
people are so curious to know about someone's life. I don't know why. I believe you have seen that I'm never posting the tops and the bottoms that I'm catching. I'm never posting where I am, what I'm eating, where I'm going. I just don't want people to know what's going on in my life because they don't have to care about it. If we want to provide value, what kind of value am I going to provide for people if I'm showing where I'm going, which spa treatment I'm getting and what food I'm eating and stuff like that. And by showing the profits, I definitely don't help anyone unless I will do a breakdown, but no one is patient nowadays to watch a whole video where they can kind of like learn something from it. People are focused on the wrong things. But yeah, I definitely want to warn you about all these influencers because the loudest ones are the ones that are not transparent. They act like they are very innocent, but they're not. They knew the truth, but they requested the contract renewal in February. And I know that if those people are watching me, <laughs> then I, I might have to come to Australia, <laughs> Aussie trader, because <laughs> I don't want to do a plastic surgery in Thailand. <laughs> I have too much information. <laughs> what shocked me the most was the SFT situation. Uh, I wanna, yeah, they, I was thinking a lot today, like what to say, what not to say. Of course, I cannot share everything with you. I wanna, make sure that I'm fine and safe. <laughs> Definitely not planning to do surgeries. <laughs> um, but what I want to say is that, I don't know if you saw my story on Instagram, uh, where I wrote that I can confirm that everything that Riz mentioned is the truth. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that, I know that it's really hard to believe anyone online and I'm not telling you to believe anyone, but the reason why I, uh, the reason why I went and, and posted this story was because I was there, I was working with them. I know how things were. I know that it's the truth. And that's why, uh, I feel confident to confirm that, um, he was telling the truth in the video that he posted. Oh my God, people, I mean, listen to me, <laughs> listen to me. I was talking about the affiliate influencers. I was talking about the affiliate influencers that are telling me now that, oh, this was a scam. We knew what was going on. Those were people that, I mean, those influencers that act very innocent and that act that they care about you are were requesting con a contract renewal in february even though they knew what like how things were like what was happening um but yeah to go back to what i was saying about um about reese i wanted to confirm that the things that he shared in the video are true because i was there i was working with them and i know that it's the truth things were very disorganized um all the ones that were working with me they know that i'm a workaholic uh but it was just too much it it was too much nothing was structured they were changing their mind last minute communication was really bad so everything that was stated in the video is true and um, I see that some smart individuals already connected the dots. Um, I was watching Andro NFX um, reaction video on Riz videos. And uh, yeah, I can see that some smart individuals already connected the dots and already saw what's happening. But majority of people are just too judgmental and uh, they have zero critical thinking 
and that's why they cannot connect any dots. <laughs> they are just focused on the wrong thing and they're way too loud. No one is sending me to say anything. I'm on my own. But I know, like, you, you can think whatever you want. I, I got so many DMs. People are hating on me <laughs> for no reason. I just want to say that um, I was very naive when I joined... Um, when I started working, I was very naive and I was thinking as all of you that um, the business model was as it was promoted. I was thinking that if you win, we win was the way. <laughs> but after some time, I realized that that's not the truth, that the business model was totally different and I was really naive to think that that the marketing was the right one because it's just too good to be true um, but putting aside like in general the business model in all of the prop firms that we have nowadays is um, the revenue is coming from the challenge fees so of course they need profitable traders so that they can promote their services. And um, do some interviews and marketing. But when the only source of income is coming from the challenge fees that failed traders are paying, then we know that this industry is not for us. It's not for the trader. And the only way out is regulations. I want that regulations are going to come in and show us which ones, which firms are for the trader and which firms are just for the money. And um, I was just too much focused on the comments. Like to go back to what I was saying about Therese, um, yeah, I know that everything that he mentioned was. Um, was the truth uh, and i know that yes they did a mistake we in this mistake is a human mistake i see many people are hating on them and i feel um i just want to say that these guys really put a lot of effort to build the um, authority that they have to get the trust in and i know that they had a good intention and that's what matters for me I know that when they started, they wanted to do something great. They wanted to provide knowledge for the traders, not for the gamblers. We know that this industry is full of gamblers. It's like a casino, worse than casino. But they came in and they wanted to really provide value for the ones that are willing to put in the work and the ones that... Um, the ones that are focused on the right thing and there is nothing wrong like um, prop firms were the ticket out for many people and um, due to the low entry level like you can pay a small fee to get a larger capital to trade with and you can make some money out of it like it's it's good for people that don't have cap capital to trade with uh, but it's not something that we should be focusing on long term because I don't think that the current prop firm model will stay for long because it, it's the business model is not a right one. So, um, what future of TFT? <laughs> um, maybe you joined a bit too late, but I don't think there will be a future. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, what we should be focusing on is to focus on the things that work long term. Um, 
nowadays, like everything is advertised in a way that makes us impatient. We want to get this uh, instant gratification. We want that things are going to go fast. And the mistakes that we do with trading are is a, mis a mistake that um, Reese Paladin and Omar did, for example. They want they wanted the shortcut. Let's say if they wanted to build a prop firm on their own, they it was going to take them much longer time. It was going to take um, much more effort to do the whole research, to find the whole team, to do all this back end, uh, to find the team for the back end and all of that. And uh, we are all human beings. Um, we can get excited and see an opportunity and we don't want to miss it and we jump into it without really understanding what we are working with and who we are working with and all of that. Um, so I can, I, I can just compare it with something from in general, from like from general life. I know that many people, I don't know if from the ones that are here on the live stream have been cheated, but majority of people have been cheated by their partners, uh, girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, wives, whatever. So when you go on a date initially, when um, you're trying to build a relationship, you're not looking for the bad sides of this person. You're not looking for the gaps. You cannot see some things at the beginning. And, and it's just a human nature that sometimes we fall for traps. So now, was it intentional or wasn't it intentional? That's the question. Or did someone get too greedy and messed up things on the way? Or this was the intention from the beginning is the question. But what's more, more important is the, the intention. Because the intention that they had is what tells me uh, the personality and the core values of one person. And I know that they wanted to do something good. That's why I'm there to protect them and to be on their side. I'm not saying that they didn't make a mistake, like, uh, but this mistake was something that we all can make. No, nobody's perfect. Everyone can make a wrong decision that sometimes can cost us a lot. And um, when I was talking about the shortcuts, even with trading, we try to find shortcuts. Uh, when we start, we want to find this perfect magical strategy. We don't want to do the job to backtest, to find, to refine our own strategy, to study. We want to find the fastest way to make the money. So they were thinking maybe that way. Okay, perfect. Someone who has already worked with something for a while already knows how those things are operating. So let's just execute. But when you take the shortcut, usually it's ends up with issues and things don't end well, unfortunately. So the best way always is the hardest and the slowest way. That's a lesson that I've learned. So, I mean, now we can learn on someone else's mistake, but I've done this mistake myself a few times in my life. And now I know that the best way is the slowest and the hardest way because this is a stable way that can help us um, that can help us sustain the success that we are achieving in climb upwards and not just uh, go up quickly and then crash. So don't take shortcuts. <laughs> Many of those firms are white labeled. So it's one company offering all the services on the back end. So they, you just rebrand everything and just run the marketing. And when the business model is based on just failed challenges, you got to be really neat thing that the prop firms are here for the trader, even though it's promoted that it's from traders for traders. That's not the truth. I 
I'm still using props, um, but I'm trading also a personal account. So something that I want, like the way how I'm planning to deal with the whole situation, because I do expect that this prop firm bubble will burst anytime soon. Um, I do still trade prop firms because as I mentioned earlier, the entry level is very low. So you can, uh, you can buy an account with a very small fee. And uh, as long as they are here, and if you're a good trader, if you're profitable, if you're not gambling, you can still make some money. You should not go crazy because if you go crazy and you risk um, 4% per trade, <laughs> the chances that you're going to get banned are really high. So you should still allow them to operate um, and not get too greedy, take small profits, don't go too crazy as long as they're here, but get ready for a more sustainable thing in the future. So I would recommend to everyone to um, have a personal account, build a track record. Darwin X is a good place to, uh, to their business model is a sustainable model. Of course, it's not as juicy as the marketing from the prop firms. We don't have 80, 20 profit split. We don't have, um, we have trailing drawdowns. We have like lots of other rules that we have to follow. It's not as fancy as the prop firms, but that's the sustainable way. So I will trade prop firms as long as they're here. And I believe that some of them will stay. I hope that regulations are coming as soon as possible so that they can shut the ones that are doing the business in the wrong way and, and leave the ones that are here for the trader. And I do expect that if that happens, prices of the challenges will go up. Uh, the conditions won't be as, the requirements won't be as easy as they are now, but at least it will be more stable. So I will trade prop challenges and accounts as long as they're here i will trade a personal account i would, would have darwin x account and um um and what else and yeah looking into uh, futures trading is the best thing because it's th their business model and the way that the futures is legal <laughs> like it's not like cfds cfds is not even legal in us i'm not really sure how it is in other uh, continents in Europe and here Asia, but I know that for US it's illegal to trade CFDs. That's why regulations started like looking into so many firms that are offering CFD trading, even though it's simulated. And another funny thing is like, if those things with my Forex ones, funds didn't happen uh, and everyone you know that everyone started shifting their verbiage on their websites into uh, demo trading, simulated trading, virtual profit, virtual drawdown, this and that after the things, uh, after the um, uh, circus with MFF. Why? Because they knew that the marketing was wrong. It was promoted in a way to attract people with um, wrong mindset, wrong mentality. Um, gamblers that are looking for instant gratification and thinking that one account will save their life and they will pay the debts with one account and it's it, it's a very also the targets are unrealistic like if you do a research you will see that the the prop the professional trading um, if you make two percent a year return and you're consistent like they are looking for consistent traders that are not making. 2%, 5%, 10% per month. Um, professional traders should have a very steady curve and very stable curve. And with the rules that we have um, on prop firms, it's quite like, and, and with the, the whole like idea that oh, if you lose a challenge, you can just pay another fee and buy another challenge. The whole idea is like, is putting us into a mentality that creates so many bad habits and people that are not aware of those things, they will never get rid of it. So when regulations come, come in, 
those people will definitely just give up because they will not be able to adapt on the new uh, requirements and, reg and uh, the new targets and new rules that we're going to have. Don't believe anyone. Don't believe, like, I see Funded Pro. I don't even know how is, who is Funded Pro says that the A book like if you don't have a proof don't believe that what pe what people are saying because there are just too many lies out there i haven't tried futures firms myself but uh, this is something that i'm planning to look at um this month so uh, we are doing a challenge with my trading community i have a small accountability group um and um one of our goals for this month is we, we're doing a backtesting challenge. We're um, working on a di on discipline. So we are doing challenge for our discipline. Um, and um, we will be looking into futures trading. So, um, yeah, I'm sharing with them everything that I'm planning to do. In everything that I'm doing, I want to help as many people as possible. I mean, yeah, I know that some people still think that uh, the profit split is a real profit split. But that's not the case. Um, so, yeah, don't trust. I would say, like, switch off social media. <laughs> you don't want to be on social media and waste your time consuming wrong information. The EXO tattoo, this is, uh, oh, it's on this. <laughs> um, me and my sisters have the same tattoo in the same place. EXO means kisses, hugs, and I have a heart here that you can't see, which is love. And we, all of us love The weekend. So when he was super popular, we decided to, to make it a two, all of us, three on the same place together. I know that many people know me just the um, formal lady talking about liquidity and order blocks, <laughs> but I'm a totally different person outside of TFT. And I don't know if I'm going to enjoy the live streams, if I'm going to enjoy, um, yeah, the singer, um, if I'm going to enjoy the live streams, I definitely want to be there and um, help as many traders as possible. I'm definitely ignoring people that have a wrong mindset and are here for the wrong thing. I just don't want to waste my time on such kind of people that are so negative and uh, have zero empathy and are just attacking and criticizing without critical thinking. But I definitely want to help people that have the right mindset. And uh, for me, like I'm not in this industry um, for the flashy lifestyle. I just love trading. I just love the fact, like the psychology behind trading. And um, it's a profession that really helps you become the best version of yourself. That's why I do it. That's why I love it. And it's really, and it's a very nasty industry. It's, um, if you're into gossiping, you can <laughs> have fun for sure. <laughs> Aussie trader, I know that you want the lamb boss. You want the green one, isn't it? If I remember correctly. <laughs> I'm not going to be sharing thoughts for specific um, firms. Uh, I'm not trading with Funded Next, so I don't know anything about them. 
but I know that the business model that every single prop firm, like the prop firms that we are trading that they have is just a really bad way, but wrong way. And it's not sustainable. That's why I'm expecting that this prop firm bubble will burst anytime soon. And that's why we have to think of um, more sustainable ways to trade. And, and another thing is like, I would say to everyone, create, um, have more sources of income. Don't rely only on trading because it's going to be just too stressful for you and it's not going to be good for your mindset. You, It's going to mess you up. So it's good to have uh, more sources of income and not just rely on trading because you should not have expectations that you're going to get paid from a prop firm. Like treat it. it you can believe only when you get the money on the, your account so that don't have expectations hangover. Um, Are you going to open the accountability group again? Uh, maybe, maybe I will open the accountability group again. Um, this month, as I said, we're doing a challenge. And um, the ones that are in the accountability group, they know that I do want to pay attention to every single trader that is in the group. So I asked them to do a personality test. We've been uh, analyzing the strengths and the weaknesses of each person. Uh, reflecting on how those things can impact us as traders, finding the right um, um, finding the right trading style according to your strengths and weaknesses, according to your schedule, um, providing feedback on different things, doing webinars. So I do if I I don't want to have a community full of uh, full of I don't want to use bad words. <laughs> Let me think how I can express myself. <laughs> um, I want to have a group with people with the right mindset. That's why the way how I um, I chose the people that are in the accountability group was through a Google form. So I was looking at the answers that I received from uh, traders. And based on that, I, I kind of could feel like which ones are going to be serious and do the job and which ones not. And that's how I, um, that's how I decided which, which members will be part of the accountability group. And I think that they're happy with the, with that. So once I get more used and put like more things in structure and, um, and they are more independent, then I will let more people in and maybe some of the, uh, current members that are part of the community will be able to help me out to help the new traders that will be joining the accountability group. But I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to open it for everyone. Uh, as I say, said, the slowest and the hardest way is always the best way. So that's what I'm sticking to. I'm not rushing to grow a co community because that way no one will benefit from it. It will be too noisy for, mys for myself and it will not be beneficial for many of the traders because they won't be able to get any proper feedback. They won't be able to um, follow their instructor. I cannot follow what they're doing to provide feedback in order to make sure that I'm giving the right guidelines. Um, is that... I do have a trading tattoo. You know about it. Actually, I, I haven't I haven't talked about it in public. Um, so, and this is something else that we can talk about: um, mindset and manifestation. I'm a person who really believes in uh, manifesting. I really believe that uh, we are the ones creating our reality. Uh, so. It's very important. Uh, I'm, I'm reading lots of books from Joe Dispenza. And uh, there is one book that I gave to the community to read for this month, which is called uh, the Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And this book explains really well how our thoughts are creating our reality, uh, how our thoughts are creating our feelings. And these feelings are 
leading to the same actions and the same actions are leading to the same boring everyday life that we live and that our brain wants to predict things our brain wants to have things certain because um we know how to control things that that we have been through but we don't know how to control things that we that are uncertain that's why trading is so difficult for all of us so i truly believe that we in manifestation because uh, manifestation is to be able to see the future that you want to create before it happens um so this is something that i did already in the early um, days of my trading career uh, when i i was feeling from the start that this is it this is what i want to do for the rest of my life and when i was going through a hard time i i did something which is uh here bull and bear and i said to myself i will never give up like uh, and i will put a tattoo on my on myself so in case I, I'm thinking of giving up, as soon as I see this tattoo, I will remind myself of uh, why I started and where I want to go and um, what are the things that I'm manifesting. So I've been through so many things in life. I don't know how many of you know about my life story. I don't think many of you know, but um, all the things that I've imagined in my life, I, I made them happen and I... And, and that's uh, definitely thanks to manifestation. I, I've been manifesting since I was a kid. And whenever I was thinking of something that I'm going to do, I was just doing it. I was just going for it. Um, and I was always willing to take the hardest way to my goal because um, this was the most satisfying way, even though you have to go through so many ups and downs, you have to go through so many struggles but the pleasure that you feel when you achieve what you have manifested is uh, it can be described with words and gives so much confidence to a person and it gives you so much motivation to set a new uh, goal and manifest for even better version of you Um, about the accountability group, I have so many people that are reaching out and want to join the group. But yeah, in April, I'm not going to let anyone in. Um, maybe May, maybe May, I'm going to um, open up some spots. People are not so interactive. It's boring for, for me to just like sit here and talk. What do you want to know? <laughs> I definitely, uh, the reason why I decided to, I was actually very hesitant if I should start doing live streams or not, if I should um, go out on social media or hide, because I don't like social media. Like my relationship with social media is like just totally off. The only way how I could, um, how I could be active on social media is me creating content and someone else posting and managing my account. Cause I just, I just don't want to open Instagram. I don't want to go through all DMS. Like if you are, if you're sending me DMS and you don't get the response, it's not personal. I'm just ignoring messages because I feel that it's just too much waste of time for me. If I start like just responding to every single message and I want to use the time to feed my brain with something inspirational and something that is beneficial for my mental health, my future, my like for myself. And I don't find chatting and um, scrolling through the feed is not the way that I, that gives me any, I don't think that this is beneficial for anyone. So that's why I don't want to do it. How do you mean, how was your relationship with the TFT management? <laughs> uh, 
I'm not going to say where I am at the moment. I'm somewhere in Asia. <laughs> somewhere in Asia, close to Thailand. <laughs> I'm not in Thailand anymore. Yeah, maybe Australasia. <laughs> I haven't done I haven't done live stream market analysis. I was I'm doing analysis for the accountability group every single day unless uh, there is like unless nothing has happened that has changed my um, my ideas. Like when price is consolidating, then of course I'm not posting analysis every single day. But um, if not, then I do share my analysis with the community. I share my trades. I share what, what I'm when I'm losing. Mm. But I might start doing live streams on market analysis. I might start doing it. Did you work closely with them? I was working a lot. <laughs> I was working too much. And um, like all people that were working with me, they know that I'm a workaholic and they know that I've been working um, with all these firms like for more than, every single day for more than eight hours a day. There was no day when I was just working eight hours. It was more than eight hours. And it's been a year full of um, different opportunities. I've learned so many lessons. As I said, like I was very naive when I joined this industry. I was very naive when I before I started working. And this year has been a crazy eye opener for me. I really understood everything about like not fully everything, but um, majority of the things on how those businesses are run and how all the operations are. Um, and it's really good to have that knowledge. And uh, I've been working with so many things um, in the firms, marketing related. But the thing is, um, I didn't know what really was going on until recently when I started receiving way too many DMs from traders that I've interviewed. That's when I kind of like started realizing that something was off and some, something was going on. Before, I had just too much to do uh, to be on social media and to see what people are writing and what people are saying. So I started realizing when I started receiving DMs from traders that I already know and that I've, I've interviewed. And uh, I can actually share like a few things. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I started receiving so many messages, of course, I started like reacting. And um, as I said, the communication was in general like very bad um the com the communication was very bad and even the way we've been laid off was a really wrong way in my opinion um i had taken a few days off for my birthday and um while i was partying I i'm not partying anymore but i decided to uh go and party for my birthday and um i just received an email and and no call no thank you no nothing <laughs> um i just received an email and they even uh, something that i'm not gonna forgive them is they they even forgot to write happy birthday in the email <laughs> uh 
couldn't you suspect things earlier? So as I mentioned, like the workload that I had was insane. That's why I said, like, I said to many close people that this was the best birthday present I could wish for. Um, I had a crazy workload and um, I was not, I was focused on finishing the things that I had to finish because I'm a very responsible person. Um, and when I started noticing things quite late, it was sometime in January when I started receiving too many DMs from people that I know. And I wasn't like, first I thought that it was just mistakes. But when it started happening way too often, that's when I realized that something was off. But yeah. I have so much information. <laughs> but... I just don't want to, of course, I want to think of, of myself. I don't want to create problems for myself for no reason. The things that I was responsible for were uh, marketing related. Everything was marketing related. Because as I mentioned, those firms are white labeled. So the back end operation is run by something else, someone else. And um, you're just doing the marketing. But of course, like, uh, I don't want to talk too much about what's happening in the back end. I don't have much information, but I know, I know how it looks like. But yeah, there is no point to share. For me, the reason why I wanted to do this uh, live stream, like, I know it's a bit clickbaity. <laughs> Um, for me, I think that if I share exactly what I know and what, what's, I don't care who is watching me. I just know that I'm telling the truth and I, I'm just sharing what I think. So I don't care who is watching me. Um, but yeah, like there's no point for me to explain exactly what happened because this will not benefit anyone it will be just for gossiping and it will just cause trouble for myself um but so that's why i decided to just share with you what is beneficial for you and just to show that i'm on the j just to share my opinion um and to share how everything was with um riz omar and paladin because i just know how things were and it hurts me to see how people are attacking them and me as well. But I, for me, I don't give a shit because I know that people that are attacking me are just have just no brain cells. And <laughs> I don't want to be arrogant, but yeah, people that are attacking me definitely have no brain cells. They don't understand that I was there just doing my job just to have another source of income, not to rely only on trading. But of course, like, if I knew that things were off, I wouldn't, I was planning, uh, I was actually, um, I'm losing my thoughts. So I said, this was the best birthday present that I could receive this email. Why? Because uh, when I've been reflecting on how things were have been the past year for me um because i joined them last year in uh february and everything ended this year in february uh so so yeah when i've been reflecting on this year it has been definitely a year full of lots of opportunities i've learned so many lessons which i'm really grateful for i'm really grateful for the connections that i made um it was very eye-opening for me. I now know which ones are the real traders, which ones are just lying in influencers. And um, and I just know which people have the 
same core values as me because I don't want to do anything with people that don't have the same core values as me. Um, so it was very eye-opening, but it's good that I'm not involved in all of that anymore be because I should focus on the things that are most important for me. And I was prioritizing the wrong thing the last few months. I'm a very responsible person and uh, the workload was insane. So I wanted to deliver just because that's my personality. And it was very wrong. Like, I, of course, I tried to communicate that. No one was paying attention. Um, I've been just told that I'm complaining too much. And, um, and now I know that I've been prioritizing the wrong things. So it's good that now I have the time to prioritize the right things. Okay, it's been an hour. I feel so weird. I've been talking for a whole hour. But I might I might start doing those live streams. If you want, I can do some chart analysis. Today is a bank holiday. So no trading. Let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, I believe you can. OK, so let me start from the monthly chart. Oops, what did I do? So we've been in this long consolidation. I will first look at DXY and after that I'll look at Euro and Pound as well. So the first thing I can see looking at the monthly chart is that price came and tested this fair value gap that we have here. And once we tested this fair value gap, we had a market structure break and then we retested from this order block that was created here and now we are going upwards again. We have a balanced price range right over here, which is uh, which can act as resistance. So the, we're going to know if, if DXY will continue um, higher if, um, if price closes above this balanced price range. So, but looking at the structure as it is now, uh, we had this market structure shift. We respected this area here and started pushing higher. And we see that last month um, tested 50% of this monthly order block that we have here and then bounced back again. So let me just go on the weekly to see what's happening there. And we had another market structure shift on the weekly. Price is respecting bullish PDRAs. We respected this order block here. And this was the same area that we saw on the monthly, uh, the threshold level on the monthly order block. And we are moving higher. So as I mentioned, uh, we had the balance price range here. So this zone can act as resistance, which means price might first liquidate this buy side liquidity and then retrace um, into this fair value gap in order to continue higher or maybe drop lower. But there is a higher chance for price to continue higher because the order flow is bullish and we're re respecting bullish PDRAs. If we go on the daily, we can see that we can see that price K 
came and respected this volume Im imbalance that we have here. So what might happen is tomorrow price might come to back to liquidate these daily lows, which are in a form of trend line liquidity. I did the analysis earlier for the community, so that's why I know that we had the trend line liquidity here. So something that I'm anticipating to see tomorrow is price going lower, taking this um, sell side liquidity and most probably respecting this for our uh, point of interest or order block in order to continue higher and target the next buy side liquidity. So we had already we have already taken buy side liquidity. Now it's time for sell side liquidity and then again buy side liquidity. So this will be a trade idea that I will be looking for uh, tomorrow or maybe Wednesday. Uh, we know that it's the first week of the month, so we're going to have NFP um, this Friday. And I believe we had some other news. Yes. So we have PMI. So this week, like Thursday and Friday are definitely not good for trading. And even like I might trade London Wednesday, but I wouldn't trade Thursday because usually Thursdays before NFP are just consolidation. Uh, and then we see or we see maybe manipulation, then the distribution happens with NFP. Uh, but I'm not going to be trading those high impact news. So uh, we will be focusing on backtesting with my community this week. And hopefully if there is a setup forming tomorrow or Wednesday, I will take um, I will take a setup if if I have something good. Of course, I'm not trading DXY, but I would look for uh, sell setups on EURUSD. Um, I know that before I was trading EURUSD, GBP, USD, and US CAD, but it, lately I've been ignoring US CAD. Um, I haven't looked at looked at it consistently. I've been just analyzing DXY, Euro, and GBP, EURUSD, and GBP, USD on a daily basis, and I just decided to stick to them. Um, because I didn't like the price action on US CAD lately, so I just started ignoring it. So, so yeah, that's that's my that this will be my idea for for this week. I would like to see price come in and liquidating this trend line liquidity here, and then if I get a confirmation on a fifteen minute time frame, the way I enter is a very simple way. I just wait for. A confirmation on a 15 minute time frame and in this case it's even a I, I might even take a risk entry because it's a good liquidity pool and i see that we are respecting bullish pdra so depending on how price will be approaching this point of interest here i will decide if i will take a risk entry or i will be waiting for a confirmation of on 15 minute time frame in order to enter um and the way I'm entering is also like super simple. As soon as we get a market structure break or market structure shift, I just uh, look at the order blocks that are in discount if I'm bullish and I'm setting limit orders on them and then targeting the next draw liquidity. So if I'm going with the trend, I usually target the previous high if I'm bullish or the previous low if I'm bearish. And if I'm going counter trend, then the low hanging fruit is my target. Um, so, thank you. Um, so your USD, let me Let me check your USD as well. So opposite of DXY, we just don't have as many volume imbalances on your USD as we have on DXY. 
So we have this balance price range that has been tested already once, twice. So it has been tested two times, which means that most probably this time around, it will be liquidated and price will continue on the downside. Uh, but yeah, price has been ranging for way too long. Um, it has not been super easy to read price, but I remember that when I did analysis for my community, um, when price took this sell side liquidity, I told them it might be just a sell side liquidity grab and then price might continue higher or, or it might be a market structure break. And the way we know, uh, we are going to know if it's, it was just a liquidity grab or market structure break is by seeing that price respected this weekly order block and shifted uh, to bearish order flow. Um, I'm paying attention a lot to um, the candle, how the candles are closing. Um, I know that ICT was repeating, like the wigs do the damage, the bodies tell the story. So that's why I'm paying, like most of the times when we see, of course, not like on, on higher, depending on what's happening on lower time frame and higher time frame, but many times we just see a liquidation and then, then price continues on the opposite side. But now it looks like this is a market structure shift here. We respect it. We came into premium, uh, respected this weekly order block that we have here. And now we're shifting. We shifted to bearish order flow. We can see that. Let me just remove all these drawings. I put them there because I was explaining I when I shared my analysis with the community. So. We have a small volume, a balanced price range here as well. But this is a small balanced price range. I don't expect price to go that higher before dropping. Let me see what's happening on the daily time frame. Um, so as we can see, we are respecting bearish PDRAs. I remember that I shared this trade idea with my community. And last week, we I missed a really good trade. So what might happen here is price tomorrow coming and liquidating this daily high tapping into this fair value gap that we have here and then continuing lower but something that we should keep in mind is that we have a lot of trend line liquidity here this is a low resistance liquidity so something that might happen is that price might just continue dropping and creating more uh, low resistance liquidity and this being attacked with nfp with a huge move, or we might see price doing what I just mentioned, taking this uh, daily high, tapping into this fair value gap, and then dropping lower. Um, and I wouldn't take a trade here without the confirmation just because of the liquidity that is sitting above. But this zone here is an interesting zone. And if I see this zone being violated, then the order flow will be shifting. So if we continue on the downside, I would not expect to see this high being uh, liquidated. Price should stop somewhere here. Or if it really like retrace deep, then it should respect this point of interest and continue lower if it wants to continue lower. And we can see that we have some liquidity resting, waiting for it now. Uh, I mean, here, relative equal lows. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, like earlier, I used to trade many different entry models. I used to overcomplicate things, but now I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible and it's much better for me. 
Are you, um, didn't I check you? No, I didn't check you. I didn't always this part of my community, but not now. So GU is looking quite different from EU. Uh, they haven't been as correlated as they used to be. Uh, the pound has been much stronger. And I really hated the consolidation of um, pound dollar. So I haven't been trading pound, but even the, I was watching it, but I haven't been trading it because I just didn't like the consolidation in which it was stuck. For example, here, we never tested this balance price range that was created. Actually, we did here, but it's like still this can act as um, a support for the pound. So things are looking a bit different on the pound. But this is on a monthly chart. And um, something that was really good, like a good trade idea, was targeting this trend line liquidity that we had here. It was, I actually took some trades uh with this move when this move happened um but let me drop on a lower time frame to just get a better picture of what's happening so as we can see here price was just consolidating it created a lot of liquidity uh we attacked this liquidity so we took this buy side liquidity and then price dropped suddenly and shifted the order flow to bear, from bullish to bearish by creating this it's an order block or it created this balance price range here so this balance price range should act as uh resistance in this case for price to continue lower the market structure if you look at the market structure the market structure is still bullish because this was the, I mean, no, not this one. This was the one. This is the low that created the last high. But as it looks now, I do expect to see this liquidated. So what will most probably happen is price um, attacking this little trend line liquidity that we have in a lower time frame in testing this balance price range i see that i've marked up a breaker block here as well so i would expect to see price coming testing this zone and then uh dropping lower and targeting these lows let me go on the daily as well to have a better picture so yes we have a fair value gap here on the daily as well this trend line liquidity as i mentioned on a four hour chart it might be even cleaner and the, this zone here, the whole zone is a breaker block. So I would watch this zone here for the pound. I would expect price to, but we have like a huge um, um, imbalance. So I would look at the 15 minute structure here and wait for a confirmation on the downside in order to look for shorts. But yeah, we created a really nice trend line liquidity here. So, so that was DXY, Euro, and Pound. I haven't been creating much content. Um, to be honest, like it's re much easier for me to, it's much easier to just press recording. I mean, uh, go live than creating content in my opinion, because in order to create content consistently, you have to come up with different ideas. You have to script it and you have to plan what, like, uh, how to make the video as shorter as, sh as shortest as possible, but deliver as much information as you can. Uh, and then the editing part is a totally different thing. It's complicated and unless, of, of course, I, I had an edit, I have an editor who is helping me out and I cannot edit, edit the videos myself. But for me, like, I don't really want to teach. I don't want to have videos where I'm just teaching because I just feel that I'm not qualified to teach people how I'm trading and what I'm looking at even though my community is telling me that they find my webinars um, 
very valuable and helpful, which makes me happy. Um, but I'm just not like all these online influencers getting one payout and selling in the course is ready uh, for selling. I just don't think that this is right. So I don't consider myself as qualified to teach. That's why um, I know that people want to see videos on how other people analyze, how other people look at price and stuff like that. But me personally, I'm like, if, if people want me to do such kind of videos, I can do them, of course. But it's not the thing that I want to do. Like, I prefer to have like um have a conversation with people like now instead of just doing videos and posting and it shows more i can connect more with it with people in that way like i cannot connect with people through just posting videos what kind of content do you prefer to watch I know that you've been all searching for how to flip an account, <laughs> but I hope you have passed this stage already. Okay, there is no much interaction, so I think uh, vlogs, okay. Um, there is no much interaction, so I think I will we'll end the live stream very soon. Yeah, I know, like, especially that I've been interviewing people and I know that um, I know that many of them are not like even profitable, but they're everyone is selling a course and this just makes me feel so bad about it. Like uh, uh, in order for me to ask for money from someone to teach them something, I cannot do it without having a few years of experience, proper knowledge in not only technical analysis, but also like fundamental analysis and lots of different things. Like, and why would I sell a course on something that you can find for free on YouTube? I've been trading for four years now, almost four years. In a week, um, how many trades do you ideally take in a week? Usually two trades in average, like one to two trades, sometimes three, but not more than three trades per week. And when it comes to the risk, my risk is not static. I'm using a dynamic risk depending on what account I'm trading. Um, I've been actually teaching my community how I'm managing my risk management so for example for challenges i in my rules i've written that if um if my account is at the initial account balance then my first um trades i usually risk like um, um 0 0.5 percent if the first trade is a win then i increase my percent my risk on like challenges um on and if I go into a drawdown, let's say it's, uh, down to minus 2%, I'm risking 0.5% per trade. And if I drop below 2%, then I decrease it to 0.25 until, until I'm back to like minus 1%. And this is helping me not to get into crazy drawdowns. So I never have like crazy drawdowns. But of course, this way of trading is much more conservative and... Uh, um yeah you're you, you gotta be patient you gotta i'm not greedy like for me i'm i, I know that i'm in this game for uh long term so i want to do it the proper way but of course there are so many different ways to approach uh risk management especially prop from challenges like when it comes to personal account i have a rule of uh risking one percent per trade but if i have like four losses in a row then I go, uh, then I risk half of it until I climb back from the drawdown and then I increase it again.
what do you feel struggling the most in your trading? Um, I have had, I've been struggling with different things during different periods. Um, so there was a period when I was struggling with hesitation. Um, like I'm super confident in my analysis. Be, like um, I opened the, um, I opened the um, community mid of January and I've been going back to review like all the analysis that I've made. And uh, from mid of January until like now, my daily bios was wrong only two days. Uh, the rest of the days I had um, the correct daily bias. So when it comes to analysis, I feel super confident, but some, something that I had the problem with was hesitation because my execution criteria were, were not as so clear. So uh, this is something that I adjusted a few months ago. Uh, I had way too many entry models. So when I was about to enter a trade, I would hesitate where to enter. Should I enter on the breaker block? Should I enter on the FPG? Should I enter OTE? Um, and then I would beat myself up over uh, missing a trade Oh, and say like, oh, I had to enter on the breaker block. I shouldn't be that greedy to aim for a higher risk to reward and wait for an OTE retracement. So just to remove this um, mental, um, ju just to not to self-sabotage myself and beat myself up over missing moves, I just decided to have one entry technique and this is what I'm sticking to now. Um, it's just much easier for me. And I've talked to so many traders uh, and I realized that the simpler you uh, trade, the better it will be for you. So you want to remove everything possible that can cause hesitation you want to be as robotic as possible i know it's impossible to not to have emotions and not to um you just have to be aware of your emotions and not let them control you but it's impossible to trade without emotions and when you have a good trading plan and you have very clear execution criteria you can be more like a robot and not beat yourself up over um the losses that you're taking because you're going to know that you respected your plan. So when you have clear rules that you in a checklist, uh, I asked the community actually to create a checklist and write a proper trading plan. And we've been reviewing this plan yesterday uh, so that from today on we can uh, backtest and I can help them optimize their strategies. So something that is very important uh, that I've been mentioning to them is to have also to have a very clear risk management plan, to know exactly how much you're trading, uh, how much you're risking per trade, um, how you will be dealing with the drawdown. This is something that I've never seen in any trading plan, but this is something that I have in my trading plan. And I think it's very important that everyone will have a proper uh, risk management plan for drawdown as well. So um, your trading plan should be very clear and very specific. You should not leave any room for hesitation. You should have one to two entry models, according to me, so that you can, uh, once you get more experience, maybe you can add more entry models and we are all different. So I'm not going to say to anyone, oh, do it the way I'm doing it, because maybe it's not working for me, but it will be working for you. But what I personally find more beneficial and less detrimental for the for uh, the mindset for the decision making is to keep things as simple as possible and as clear as possible. So I'm focusing on the market structure. Um, um, I just do top down analysis, determine my daily bias, but I'm not like married to the daily bias. I'm still thinking out of the box and what can happen if like uh, I'm trying to make a story behind every single trade idea that I take. Um, so if like if you cannot make a story behind the trade ideas that you are taking, this means that you don't understand price. You're just trading patterns. You're not trading with understanding. Um, like last year uh, and the year before, I used to risk only 0.25% per trade. I was just sticking to 0.25, but things were just going way too slow. And... Uh, when I started talking to um, all the profitable traders uh, that were making like six-figure payouts, five-figure payouts, 
um, that's when I started to change things, which was when I was risking on only 0.25 per trade all the time, like not changing anything, things were going well. After that, I made some adjustments. Those adjustments impacted me. Um, that's why I'm saying like, don't be on social media. Don't watch YouTube too much. Don't watch other people. Don't watch the, like what other people are trading in. Um, don't even look at other people's analysis. You should be confident and you should trust your analysis because just because someone is more experienced than you doesn't mean that um, that they are right. Like you should train your eyes and you should be independent. That's how you're going to grow and become a good trader. You should not look at what others are doing and try to copy because you can never copy what someone else is doing. I can show you exactly what I'm doing with my strategy and we're not going to trade the same. Uh, we can trade similar, but we cannot we'll never trade the same. Um, okay it's cool that you like the life analysis we can i can definitely like start doing live streams more often and um uh tape reads and um and share with you how i'm looking at price and what i'm looking at uh why no operate one pair to be honest, like um, I do analysis on uh, EURUSD and GBPUSD because uh, they, before they were more correlated. It was not really like now. They are still correlated, but not as much as they were before, uh, like a year ago. Or So I'm mainly focused on EURUSD, uh, but sometimes I compare... Let's say if my bias is bullish on both of them, which the usually the bias is always the same. It's just that sometimes we have a bigger move on on the pound and smaller move on the euro and vice versa. So I would check um, euro pound just to see the structure and how things are looking on the uh, euro pound in order to decide if I should trade. Uh, Euro USD or trade GBP USD, and which one is promising a bigger mover or which one is higher probability trade. Uh, but yeah, I'm not um, I'm not trading everything that you see here. Like uh, the all the pairs that I have here is just like things that people are asking me to look at, and uh, and yeah, and I have Bitcoin, so that's why I'm tracking Bitcoin, <laughs> Shiba. <laughs> um, Oh, um, I'm definitely not going to take three trades by end of Wednesday. Uh, I'm very picky with my trade with my trades. I'm not trading so often. Like, um, for example, if this my setup is not going to form tomorrow and Wednesday, um, if, if like it depends. It's not that I have rules like, oh, I'm not going to touch uh, the charts and I'm not going to watch the charts at all Thursday and Friday. I just I've seen that um, days before NFP are always consolidating, like the, the price action is not good. So that's why I'm, I'm just um, just doing other things and focusing on other things. I do still look at the charts. There is no day that I'm, I haven't checked the charts. I always check the charts, but it's just not worth entering a trade when there is no move. Like you want to preserve your mental capital. You don't want to be stuck in a trade forever. So that's why I'm avoiding such days. But let's say if I see a really good setup forming and, I'm, um, and it forms according to the entry criteria that I have, then yeah, I would take a trade. Shiba, you know, yeah, I bought Shiba when no one knew about Shiba. It was not even on Coinbase when I bought Shiba. But I didn't take profits, so now I'm getting a second chance on it. <laughs> <laughs> and Bitcoin is, I know that many people were saying, oh, this is the end of crypto. But no, I don't think it's the end of crypto. 
I definitely don't think I still remember analysis that I did for for TFT's channel for Bitcoin. Um, and I said like if price manages to break this level that we're gonna shoot much higher. And another thing is um I bought Bitcoin when uh, directly after the um, COVID crash, COVID market crash. So I bought it when it was at eight thousand something dollars, and then I bought more at ten thousand. And I'm I'm keeping it. I'm not gonna sell it. Um, I wanted to buy more. I I thought that Bitcoin was gonna go lower. Um, so I was waiting like for, for it to come in those, uh, in these areas here, like 8,000 and 9,000 again to buy more, but it didn't happen. And it just continued higher and I was too busy working. So I, I, I missed this move, but it's fine. I, maybe there will be another opportunity in the future. But uh, yeah, what I wanted to mention is um, like the previous halving was exactly to, to, to uh, 2020. So we saw a crazy rally after the halving and we have a halving this year as well. So I'm really curious to see if we're going to have the same or similar effect uh, from the halving as we had 20, uh, in 2020. If we have that, then it's going to be really cool gonna be good Chino are you Macedonian thank you guys for being here it's it, it's actually fun like I I like these last live streams I definitely might start doing it more often Yes, I miss out on entries and it's totally fine. At least now I'm not beating myself up on missing out on entries. And the thing is, I'm entering on 15 minute order blocks. So, um, so usually those order blocks are overlapping with the five minutes fair value gap. And So yes, I do miss out on moves, but there is like uh, this is a mindset thing. Like I don't have a scarcity mindset. I have an abundance mindset. For me, I'm totally fine if I miss an opportunity because I know that there will be another opportunity presented tomorrow or in the next few days. So I'm not going crazy. That's why um, something that I shared with my accountability group on the webinars that we have is it's very important to um oh cool like, it's very important to have life outside of trading and do other things as well because if we don't have a life outside of trading we are way too vulnerable and uh, um we are way too vulnerable and it's very detrimental for our trading like uh you're too focused on the p l and um you feel too anxious. I I had a period when I was mostly like only focused on trading and I would sit on the charts for a whole day, look at the price, study price. And then if I don't get an opportunity, I would create a, an opportunity myself. I enter a trade, uh, I lose. And when I review my trade after like two days or one day, I'm like, what did I why did I even take this trade? I created the reason when the reason for the entry was not even there. So uh, when you analyze yourself or you analyze your psychology, we think that the more time we spend, that we expect that we're going to make something. But with trading, it's different. Um, if you spend too much time on the charts, the chances are really high that you're going to mess up. Like uh, I, I messed up like one trade in March, I remember I shared because uh, I'm sharing with my community the when I'm setting entries and when I'm in a trade and uh, how I'm managing the trades. So 
I took out one trade. The price was about to take me out. Like um, it was two pips away from my stop loss. And I'm like, ah, like it's going to be a loss. And I just took out the trade and it just went straight, uh, like shortly after I took out the trade, it went to my TP and it was like a really re risk to reward. Really, I had a really good risk to reward on that trade. And I even scaled in. Um, and I ended up in minus instead of profiting uh, from the trade. And why did I do this mistake? Because I, I didn't have a better thing to do. I was just staring at the charts. And I just, price was consolidating. I got impatient and I'm like, ah, oh, like I'm tired of this trade. And I took it out and then it went straight to my TP. So I've realized that when I'm placing trades and I'm just doing other things and I'm focusing on other things, my results are much better because I don't take any emotional decisions. And... Uh, I don't get that traumatized when I'm losing, when I'm not watching price. Um, so according to me, it's much better, at least for me, for my personality, it's better to just set my limits and not watch it. And that way I, I would have the best results because whenever I watch it, I do mess up. Not always, but most of the times when I watch price for a long time, I, I do mess up. Okay, I've been live for way too long. Um, I have to have a back testing session with my community. I was very nervous at the beginning, but now I just feel that, oh, uh, I feel like I'm, I've been doing it every single day. <laughs> so I'm going to continue doing the live streams. Maybe tomorrow I will go live during long London session uh, or maybe beginning of New York session. So if, um, if my setup forms... I might execute something live. I might show you my thought process in, in what I'm doing. So, so yeah. So subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified when I'm going to be going live. Thank you all for what, for joining. Um, I know maybe <laughs> maybe you've been expecting that I'm gonna just uh, reveal everything that was happening. Uh, it's a full day today, so don't forget that. That's why I was like, okay, I can put something clickbaity and maybe more people will join. Um, of course, I think that I did share things that are important for you and I hope that you found it valuable and you learned something from this, um, from this live stream. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, like, um, it just, I'm not that type of person to just go out and like talk and clickbait or go to Thailand. Yeah, that, that was the, <laughs> that was the decision that I had to make. <laughs> Either talk and say, like, tell everything, uh, and then book my appointment to, for plastic surgery in Thailand. <laughs> or just uh, share a little bit, just the things that are important for the traders and uh, yeah, and, and keep it there. And of course, like, um, um, I know that many people might feel down um, or many people, the ones affected might feel down with people messaging them and saying that they are scammers, that they have done bad things but personally like i don't care about the people that are messaging me and telling me that i'm a scammer because as i said like i don't care what people think i don't have to explain myself to anyone the most important thing is for me is uh to see what kind of intention a person has and if the person has a good intention and is telling the truth um no matter what, I can accept what the truth is. But when someone is lying and acting and in trying to play innocent, this is something that pisses me off and I don't support. Okay, enough talking. Thank you so much for joining the live stream. It was fun, actually. So I will definitely continue doing it. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining and see you soon again. Enjoy your, it's Monday today. Yeah, enjoy the, re like, the week ahead. But I believe we're going to, um i'll be here again maybe tomorrow or wednesday see you soon